I'm not sure I think the battery might go, but never mind. Um, some of my spiritual experiences. Um, in the early days, after my, um, after my near-death spiritual experience, where I knew, after that I knew nothing, all I heard was a message to seek a spiritual solution. And I didn't have much to go on, so I was just like a spiritual explorer. I didn't know about Hawkins at the time. And there was a, there was a famous uh, spiritual healer psychic who had a lot of books called Betty Shine. Oh, yeah. Betty Shine. So I just, I was, you know, I, I went into the bookshop trying to find out about spirituality and her book, one of her books shined at me, funny enough. <laughs> That's true. I mean, that's how it happened. When books would shine at me. Also, Marion Williamson's later shined at me. <sighs> anyway, so Betty Shine was one of my first things, and I was reading her. Anyway, I was an addict, so I was quite a negative, you know, got up to a lot of mischief, being an addict in the stock market and with addiction. And I was coming out of that darkness, and uh, I was reading her books, and one day, uh, I'm not sure if I was asleep or half awake, and it was like, suddenly there was like an entity in the room and it was like absolute terror. It was like some kind of absolutely, like a physical entity of energy or darkness. And it was like I was in absolute terror, like there was some kind of demon, demon in the room with me. And it was total, absolutely terrifying. And I was like sort of frozen with terror. And then something told me to call on Betty Shine's name as this terror was in my room. So I just like called her name, like Betty Shine. <laughs> and then it was like in a split second, the terror left, you know. Oh, wow. and, uh, and I just intuitively, something told me to call on her name and it, let, it, let, it seemed like something left the room. <clears throat> that I really feel was some kind of demonic energy in my room. That was one of them. And then, uh, the other thing that was really interesting, even for me, when well, the demonic en en entity was, ter was, was the most terrifying, but actually I was in a 12-step group. And in the 12-step groups you have people who, you know, they could be alcoholic, they could be drug addicts, whatever. And there was this woman that I knew in there. And, I, you know, I was, and, and, and she knew I was quite spiritual, doing a lot of spiritual work. And she went out into addiction. I hadn't seen her for a long time. And then one day she came in. And she saw me sitting there and she ran to me and sat right next to me. And then I felt like something, it really felt like something jumped off her aura and onto my aura and was like scratching my aura, like a thing. So I felt like nails, like, you know, there was nothing I could see. But it was like something had clung, clung onto my aura, it was like scratching at my aura. Mm. And uh, it was the most, you know, it was the most bizarre. And I could intuitively feel like there was some kind of entity trying to claw at me. Like it had an energy, and uh, anyway, I was like, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't troubled. I just thought I had to pray a lot around it to ask it to leave, and it did, it did leave pretty quickly. Um, so that was another one. That was really bizarre because I didn't think anything. I didn't feel like there could be an invisible energy that could claw me, and it was also, it was also quite interesting because I was in a spiritual location. I think this person had been in real, you know, the drugs and probably had been attracting a lot of entities onto her aura. But I didn't realise that they could have claw marks and sort of, and it didn't like me, obviously. That's why it was trying to scratch me. So that was a bizarre, that was a really bizarre one. And, uh, yeah, you know, I think the, the rest of it is just the usual stuff. Like, I'm sure we've all felt like psychic attacks or negative, negative energies and, uh, or... or uh, nightmares uh, and uh, oh yeah was another one like you know you can uh, so as I, as I sort of see it you can sometimes have dreams but sometimes you can go have out-of-body experiences to hellish astral realms you know what we're talking about yeah, yeah. so I did I did have that one there was one that, uh, so I went to bed and I I, I, I I don't think it was like a dream it wasn't like a dream dream you know something that was like a visitation to another realm and I think I visited uh, probably the upper realms of hell. And uh, it was like a place of like, absolute hopelessness and gloom. You know, like a horror movie. It was like, a, like empty, deserted streets and total gloom and despair. Like absolutely horrific place. Like the energy was thick with gloom and despair. Very physical and palpable. 
And then, I mean, it looks, it sounds hilarious. Like these empty teeth came down the road towards me, you know. And then I think I woke up, so trying to escape the, the teeth that were after. <laughs> you just have to be. I, I, knew I, I knew I visited hell that night. It wasn't a dream. Not, not, dreams are different uh, than that. So, yeah, that's it.